Our training in this car is really the heart and soul of the entire vehicle. Um, it's a 5.2 liter V8 with a flat plane crank, produces 526 horsepower and 429 pound feet of torque. It is a, a very, very unique engine. Um, the sound it makes, which you will hear, is unlike anything anybody has ever heard before. Um, it's different than other flat plane crank engines, it's different than Mustang engines from before, um, but I have not met a person yet that doesn't put a smile on their face when they hear that car at, at speed. Um, one of the things you will realize when you're out on the course, and Jim alluded to it earlier, was um, it has more legs to it and will rev all the way out to 8250. So you're going to be inclined to want to shift early if you're used to driving Boss 32s, if you're used to driving Mustangs, uh, resist that urge. Uh, in fact, one of the stories I like to tell as we're out doing this is early on, because the engine is, is such a long lead item in the development of, of the car, we had a very, very early prototype 5.2 liter V8 that the engineering team stuck in, in, in a uh, previous generation Mustang body, and I got the opportunity to drive around a racetrack in Dearborn. Uh, and I kept getting yelled at by the engineers because I kept shifting too early. So, uh, you know, we had the old tack. It would, I was burying the needle and he kept yelling at me because I was shifting too early. So resist the urge, make sure to leg it all the way out. I want to, you know, after I talk to you guys after you've been on track, I want to hear that everybody got all the way up to 8250. Um, you know, coming down the, the underneath the Mobile One Bridge, you're going to be able to get all the way into fourth gear there um, before you get into the chicane. And uh, you'll notice the powertrain and then you'll notice the brakes. And, and this car is set up for a track like this, it's set up for a racetrack. That was the onset, you know, like I mentioned from the beginning, is this had to be the fastest Mustang that we've ever produced uh, around race traffic. Um, the other really good thing about the motor is it's very, very usable in terms of a torque curve. It's got a very, very broad torque curve. Um, third gear is, is extremely usable. Uh, for the most part, you'll be in third and fourth gear this entire track. Um, and you'll be able to feel the range of, of power that the vehicle has. Um, it's a very, very special motor. Um, hopefully you guys will have a nice giant smile on your face when you're, uh, when you're done coming off track. Um, the next thing is I talked about the motor. Uh, the brakes are probably the other biggest standout feature in my mind of what makes this car special. Um, so as you're coming down that, that straightaway and you're fully into fourth gear and you pass underneath the Mobile One Bridge and then you jam hard on the brakes and downshift as you go into the chicane, uh, the stopping power on these, on, on these vehicles is very, very impressive. Um, every every GT350 you produce has the same brake package to it. Um, so 15 and a half inch rotors up front, 14.9 inch rotors in the rear. You've got a six piston caliper up front and a four piston fixed caliper set up in the rear. Uh, for those GT500 or boss owners in the past, we do have now a fixed caliper in the rear. We've got a lot of feedback from consumers uh, that that was what they wanted to see from our brake package. Um, the rotors up front, uh, both of them, front and rear, are a iron ring with aluminum hat with co-cast pins. Um, one of the reasons we went to that setup was uh, we wanted to make sure that so we had longevity in the brakes when you are on the racetrack. Um, the co-cast pins are, are an important piece to this uh, for two reasons. One, it will allow some expansion and contraction uh, as you're out on the track to avoid any kind of warpage in the rotor. And two, um, it will help to not con let the heat conduct from the ring into the, into the, to the, uh, to the hub. So you're not going to conduct that heat due to those pins, uh, so you're not going to scorch your bearings, you're going to be able to run, like I mentioned, I was out here yesterday running the long course, 30-40 uh, minutes without any issues with the brake fade at all, no powertrain cooling issues. Um, this car has been set up to be able to run track days. Uh, we were out there with a, a good mix of cars, uh, everything from uh, prototype LMP2s kinds of cars were out here yesterday, uh, all the way to club spec Miatas. Um, so we had a really nice group um, and uh, a bright red GT350R running around the track right next to them. So um, the good news is I did pass a few Camaros out there, so that was a very enjoyable experience when we were, when we were going. So the brake system on this car is fantastic. Um, I mentioned you know, the, the co-cast pins, uh, they're all cross-drilled, uh, they're all directionally veined. Um, you're going to have great stopping power out there and you're not going to have to worry about brake fading on the racetrack. Uh, so we talked about the brakes, we talked a little bit about the engine. Um, the aerodynamics are another really important uh, feature to this car. Um, this right here is an example of the GT350R. Uh, so on the R you'll notice it's got a larger splitter up front and a carbon fiber rear wing in the rear. Uh, that will set it apart from the track packages that you're going to be driving today. We have both cars when you're out on track. Um, you will be able to feel the difference in the aerodynamics of the car, especially uh, when you're coming down that, that back straight underneath the Mobile One Bridge. In fact, this car, the GT350R, has more downforce than a 911 GT3. Um, usable downforce. So from the beginning, the engineering community wanted to um, minimize drag as much as possible. 
provide usable downforce when you're on the racetrack for stability, and also provide uh, air to all the critical components. We needed to make sure this car had enough air traveling to the coolers, that way when you're on the racetrack, you're not going to have any kind of uh, overheating issues. So the car has been fully tested, and the aerodynamics has been set up both in the wind tunnel and actual track testing. Uh, thousands and thousands of hours by the engineering team has been spent with this car, torture testing it out on track to make sure that when you were to take this to a track day and you wanted to run the 30-40 minute track sessions, uh, that the car would be able to stand to that kind of abuse. Um, so from the A-pillar forward on this car, you'll notice it is all new. That was done A for aerodynamics and B for style. We want you guys, when you're driving these cars down the road, them to know it's a Shelby. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we needed to make sure that we provided all of the air uh, to all the critical components like I mentioned. So in the front of the car, you have an engine oil and a transmission cooler, and at the rear you have a differential cooler. All fed by direct air, and then we get to the flip car underneath, you'll see the ducting that goes into that. All trying to manage the airflow around the car. I mentioned thousands of hours in the wind tunnel and also on track testing to make sure that this car was set up properly uh, to give you the stability on track, but at the same time provide air to the air. So track package are, if it has stripes, you'll notice the R's have a red accent on the stripe. From the side of the car, the calipers are red. The wing in the rear will set it apart. And then the badging in the front and the rear, you'll notice that the badge here is red. That set the part of the R. And then the front splitter here is larger on the R. So, and then from the side, also the wheels. The wheel will notice the difference here. But body work, sheet metal, it's all the same. Um, so just some minor subtle differences between the two. Um, and as we talk about body work, you'll notice that if you sit this next to a 15 Mustang, um, the hood is all new, it's got a unique vent up front. Um, the fenders are pulled out to help accommodate the wider wheels and tires and the bigger brakes. Um, so the A-pillar forward, like I mentioned, is all unique to this, this car. Um, so since I talked about brakes, and I just mentioned the wheels, we'll talk about them right now. One of the really standout features to the GT350R is the carbon fiber wheels. Um, they weigh roughly 18 pounds a piece. So you've got a 19 by 11 inch wheel up front and a 19 by 11 and a half inch wheel in the rear. Uh, 305, 315, wide tires. Um, this car, and I've got a cutaway wheel uh, right in front of me as we get it done, feel free to pick it up. Gross weight is roughly 18 pounds for a wheel. To put that in perspective, if you were to take that same equivalently sized aluminum wheel, it's going to weigh about 15 pounds more per corner. So you've basically taken 60 pounds of unsprung and rotating mass off the car, which is going to make a huge difference for both acceleration, braking, turning, steering feel. It's going to change the entire character of the car. The car is going to feel lighter on its feet, and it's going to give you better performance. In fact, when we were at Lime Rock, uh, Gunnar was talking with Gunnar Jeanette, and he was telling me that he's having, he was having to grab an additional gear in places on the track because of what he was feeling and the difference between the track package and the R. So, very, very usable in terms of performance. In fact, a GT350R weighs over 130 pounds less than a GT350 in the track package. So the R, we tried to make sure that what we did with that car was reduce as much weight as possible out of it. Um, the standard R comes without a back seat, no air conditioning, no radio. If I were to pop the trunk, you'd see no lining in the trunk. You'd be able to see bare metal in the trunk. So the combination of the wheels, uh, pulling out everything that's not necessarily needed for performance, uh, got us to over 130 pound weight savings between a track package and a GT350R. Um, so the wheels are really, really special. Um, you'll also notice that we're going to be running Michelin tires on all of our GT350s. In fact, we're now running Michelin tires on all of our Ford Performance products um, because of the collaboration that we're going to have between Michelin and the Ford Performance engineers. Um, and it's not just with Michelin, but it's with all of our, our components on the car. None of them are really off the shelf components, whether it be the rotors, uh, the brake calipers, the tires, the wheels. They are all uniquely engineered specifically for this car. So, for example, the tires. They are uh, unique compounds, unique tread patterns, and unique sidewalls for the Cup 2 tires that come on the GT350R, and the same goes for the, the uh, Michelin Super Sport tires on the track package uh, and all the other variants. Um, not just an off-the-shelf tire. We really wanted to make sure we got as much grip out of the car as possible to translate to real performance when you're out in the racetrack. So, uh, another example of the Ford Performance team working really, really well with key suppliers to make sure that what we produce is the fastest Mustang we've ever produced out of a racetrack. Um, so as we come, why don't you have you guys walk a little bit this way? Um, 
we mentioned the brakes, we mentioned the, the, the tires, the wheels, the powertrain. Um, the other really standout feature when it comes to the chassis uh, is the Magnaride suspension. So, uh, when you guys are out of your trash, uh, you will notice that Sebring does have quite a few bumps that are out there. One of the trademark characteristics of this track, um, this suspension is really, really well. So we wanted to make sure, um, there's the cars you can hear going by, but we wanted to make sure that this car felt composed when you're out on the racetrack, but at the same time could be driven every day and it's very, very usable. So Magnaride is a, a great standout feature for that. Um, but again, not an off-the-shelf Magnaride system, something that's been engineered specifically for this vehicle. Um, so to put it in perspective, has anybody driven a car with Magnaride before? A couple? So one of the reasons we chose Magnaride uh, was because of the tunability and adaptability the suspension gives us. Um, Magnaride can adjust or can sense and, 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 and change its, its damping fluid in roughly 7 milliseconds. Um, so those of us that live in Southeast Michigan where the roads aren't particularly great, there are a lot of potholes, um, that whole interaction of hitting a pothole takes roughly 10 milliseconds. So the Magnaride suspension can sense it's hitting a pothole and sense that you're hitting the normal strips very, very quickly and adapt. Um, Makes it very, very usable, so I can leave it in normal mode, drive around the, around town, it's very, very comfortable. But when I get on the racetrack, I can put the selectable drive mode to, to sport or track, and it really firms up the suspension to reduce any kind of body roll that you're going to have when you're out on the racetrack. Um, but it's not just that, it's how they can calibrate the system. So knowing this car was going to be used for the racetrack, uh, what the engineers have done is they've calibrated so that way when you're coming in and let's say after you go underneath the bridge and you turn in you put your right front tire on that rumble strip right at the uh, Chateau Milan, you start going that way, it'll sense the rumble strip, it'll adjust the damping level and then it'll send a signal to the right rear and tell it to expect the rumble strip. That way when you hit it, it doesn't upset the chassis as well. So a lot of care and effort went into making sure that knowing what this vehicle is supposed to be used for and making sure to engineer all the systems that way they work together in a cohesive uh, package which is what when you get off track that's when you're going to feel like that this car is very very composed that's what's going what's to give you that confidence when you're out there to be able to push it a little bit faster between lap one lap two and lap three all the systems are going to be engineered together to make sure it delivers a package uh, that is easy to drive but yet very very rewarding when you're out on the racetrack so whether if you're a novice like me or if you're a professional like the, uh, the Ford Performance drivers out there, you're really going to be able to feel the difference, um, but yet be comfortable. You're not going to feel like when you get to that, when you start approaching that limit, that the car is going to snap on you. You're going to have a four wheels off situation. You're going to get a lot of feedback from the car. You're going to get a lot of, uh, uh, you'll be able to feel when the grip starts to, to you start to lose a little bit of grip, or when the car starts to get a little bit sideways. Um, it's not going to be a scary situation, but it'll give you the feedback you know to adjust your driving, your driving style or, or adjust your line when you're on the racetrack. So that was sort of the goal of going into this entire this program, is, is to make sure that whether you're a novice or a professional, um, you can enjoy the car on the racetrack in a, in a track day situation. Um, and then if you're a professional, you can really exploit the, the, uh, the abilities of this entire car. So when you get in the car, when you go through your walk arounds, you'll notice that the interior of the car is not just a carryover Mustang interior. Um, the Recaro seats in this vehicle are unique just to the GT350. Again, thousands of hours have been spent out on the racetrack uh, to make sure that the seats can accommodate a helmet. They cannot accommodate a Hans device. Uh, they're comfortable, they're supportive. Uh, they're not the same seats that you would get in a normal Mustang GT. Uh, special, specially designed for this car. Same with the shifter, same with the steering wheel. You'll also notice that you know, being out in bright Florida sunshine, when you come around the corners, uh, all the finishes on the interior are dulled down versus what they are in a Mustang GT. You're not gonna have the bright chrome features because the last thing you want is sun glaring off those features when you're coming around a corner on a racetrack. So a lot of care and effort has been in, put into this car to sweat all the details to make sure that the package that we, we produce and the, the, the final product uh, as we put in the consumer's hands can really stand up to racetrack usage and to make sure that it's enjoyable on the racetrack for everybody. Uh, you also notice on the interior, uh, on the instrument panel, every car will come with a unique serialized badge. Everything will have a chassis number that will denote the, the number of the vehicle as well as the model year. Uh, and then underneath the hood, you'll also notice that every vehicle, uh, all the 5.2 liter V8s are still built with the Romeo hitch line and all have the, uh, the name of the person that assembles the engine stamped into the badge underneath the hood. So another personal touch that we like to put on the vehicles to let you guys know who actually put the engine in the vehicle. So once you follow me over here, the car is up on its side. Got the sun for a minute. The good news is you guys are in the morning group, so it's not quite as hot as it's going to be for our afternoon session. 
Um, so we talked about aerodynamics in the car, um, and it's not always about, you know, when you talk about aero especially, it's not always about the fancy carbon fiber wheels or the really, really cool brakes that generate uh, the, the feeling you're going to get on a racetrack and, and give you the performance you're going to need. Sometimes it's, it's as simple as, as relatively cheap plastic, right? But it's all about how you're using that part and how you're engineering it to work cohesively with everything else in the car. So the belly pan is tied into the larger front splitter to make sure that, A, we're um, channeling air in the proper proper uh, components to make sure that um, we've got proper cooling on the racetrack. But you're also going to notice all these little up kicks here. So you can see the one here, you can see this one here. Um, this is going to help channel air into your uh, wheel wells to make sure that you're cooling your brakes. This one here is going to put air on the transmission. It's also going to move the center pressure rear to help reduce any kind of front end earthing on the racetrack. Um, so then if you look here, I mentioned the cooling for the engine oil and transmission cooling. You can see these coolers here. And then you can also see the ducting that goes in. You can see this ducting is directed right at your brakes, making sure you've got proper cooling when you're on the racetrack. These ducts here are going right to your coolers to make sure your engine oil and your transmission uh, is at the proper temperature when you're on the racetrack. So, all about managing the airflow both on the top side and underneath uh, the vehicle. Um, so the other thing I want to point out uh, with this car flipped up on its side, um, every car has a unique aluminum front knuckle uh, to change the, the geometry of the steering uh, to give us this, the hand and characteristics we want. But at the same time, it allows us to pack into the bigger brakes and bigger wheels and tires. Um, the other benefit it takes some weight off the front end, um, but it's all about how we make these brakes special. So if you look at the calipers here, they're not just the off-the-shelf calipers. We've got a set of six-piston Brembo front calipers on a Mustang uh, GT in our performance package. These are not the same calipers. These are specially designed for this car to help give you the consistent pedal feel you're going to need on the racetrack. So, from the beginning, we want to try and eliminate any kind of brake knockback. So anytime you get that pad separation from the rotor and your pedal feel isn't quite as good as you want, when you're coming down that straight, you don't quite have a stopping power you're going to want. So we're trying to eliminate any kind of that brake knockback on the course. So two things are important when you're looking at this front brake setup. Number one, you'll notice that the integrated bridge, with the one-piece caliper with an integrated bridge here to give it some additional stiffness, and then it's how these are mounted. So a lot of calipers are mounted straight down this way. These are mounted radially this way. So large bolts. The combination of mounting the caliper radially and having an integrated bridge uh, in that caliper are what's going to help reduce brake knockback when you're on the race course. So that's really going to keep that pad snug the rotor to give you that consistent amount of So again, not just an off the shelf system, something that the engineers make sure that knowing what this car is going to be used for, they wanted to make sure to engineer it to stand up to any kind of, any kind of track session. So every car comes with a six-speed manual transmission, the Tremec 3160. Uh, very, very nice, smooth shifting. Um, 373, the torsion differential. Um, every car comes with that same setup. Um, as you go through the, towards the rear of the car, this is a GT350R. If you're wondering why it sounds a little bit different than the other ones, in an effort to save weight to get to that over 130 pounds uh, weight savings, every pound matters. Um, removing the resonators from the exhaust help us shave a few more pounds off uh, to get to the weight targets that we were looking for. So it also gives it a different sound to it, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit louder, uh, which uh, as you guys hear them taking off going down pit lane, hopefully you guys will agree it's, it's the right sound. Um, so as you go back, uh, the 373 tours that I mentioned, um, you also have a new lower rear control arms, um, and then the springs are handy. So the left and the right springs are coiled opposite to help give us the damping rates that we're going to want in the rear to down the suspension to give us the, the proper levels of, of uh, suspension travel that we're going to want. Are the 350 and the 350R using the same drive shaft? Yes, same drive shaft. Um, and then if you move to the back, you'll notice the differential coolers in the rear this time. So for those that were familiar with GT500s in the past, we had a differential cooler in the front, which means you have to run cooling lines from the front to the rear. Not nearly as efficient, also added weight to the car. Uh, so we made sure from the beginning, knowing that this car was going to lose from the track, we put the differential cooler in the rear, it's a shorter travel, puts the weight in the rear of the car, um, and then you integrate it in with this rear diffuser here um, to make sure that you're channeling air as it travels underneath the car to feed air directly into those coolers. Um, the last thing I want to point out is the exhaust. Um, so as the car is flipped up on its side, you'll notice that every car comes with a uh, quad tip exhaust. The inboard of the quad tips has an active valve to it. So every GT350 we sell comes with an active valve exhaust. Um, so in normal mode, those inboard of the quad tips is closed. So it's a relatively quiet and docile sound to it. But the moment you put it in sport or track mode, it opens those valves up and that gives you the sound you guys are going to hear on the, on the racetrack today. Uh, so all the cars you'll be driving will have the valves open because they'll be in, normal, in sport or track mode. Um, but the nice part about the active valve suspension is if you're leaving your house at 5 in the morning going to wake your neighbors, you can keep the valves closed. 
And as soon as you get on the freeway, you can flip that switch, open the valves up, and get the true experience from the 5.2 V8. So, um, I know you guys are all excited to get out on the track. Uh, the good news is, I feel like this is the best group to be in, because you get to sort of learn about the car, learn about all the features instead of jumping right out on the track. Um, so as you guys progress through the stations and you get to the track, uh, hopefully by then you'll be completely familiar with this car and have a great experience. Um, so thank you again for coming. We really appreciate it. We've got some parts uh, right behind you. Feel free to pick up the carbon carbon wheel, look at the calipers, look at the rotors, look at the aerodynamic pieces behind you. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, thank you for coming and hope you guys have a good day.